if you're looking for more magic in your life, if you have the sense that there is more to life than meets the eye, then this is the podcast for you. This week, we will travel through time, back 30,000 years to India, then onwards into ancient Greece, to find out how everything from the colour of your kitchen walls to prehistoric hands to your favourite comedy series is connected. And all in the time it takes for you to breathe, reboot and have a cup of tea. Once you start exploring with me, you will reconnect with the true essence of you. That's what makes you, you. And you will realise that wherever you are on this round, beautiful planet, all roads lead you home. So let's enjoy the ride. Episode 13. Out of the Shadows. Part 1. Walls. What are you looking at right now? Where are you? Are you 100% sure? And what are you surrounded by? Maybe you're surrounded by walls at the moment. If you're not, and are listening to this in the car, or while walking your dog, or maybe sitting next to a beautiful lake, I'm sure that you're able to picture a wall. Walls offer shelter one of our fundamental physiological needs. They shield us from the outside elements and provide security and some form of stability. They support the structure over our heads, a ceiling or a roof. If you're listening to this in a room, have a look at the walls of the room that surround you. If you can, reach out and touch one and feel the texture of the wool beneath your fingers. You might have spent a long time deciding how to decorate these walls. Perhaps you've adorned them with photographs or pictures, paintings maybe, or mirrors, objects that are significant to you. Perhaps the walls are bare, vintage or sacred. Maybe you can see a cobweb or a spider. Perhaps you haven't really given your walls a second thought. When cavemen and women decided to decorate the walls of their dwelling places, this is an important stage in our evolution. One of the most famous examples of these cave paintings were hands with painted pigment. The Bimbekta rock shelters in central India contain artwork dating back over 30,000 years. They were created using various techniques, including blowing pigment over hands to create negative imprints, the very first sort of stencil. 30,000 years ago, cave people made the decision to leave an imprint of themselves, their hands to adorn the walls of their dwellings. The imprints of the hands remain, and we understand these to be representations of hands, rather than the actual reality of a hand. Tens of thousands of years later, when we watch our favourite comedy series on TV with its familiar cast and set, or perhaps go to the theatre and enjoy a West End production, we know we're in the audience. But in the words of the English poet Coleridge, we're willing to suspend our disbelief. For a short while, we enjoy the performance, aware that as we are in the audience, the story plays out in front of us. Some of the best stories have endured for thousands of years. Part 2. The Allegory of the Cave One of the most enduring stories is Plato's The Allegory of the Cave. Plato describes a group of people who have been held captive in a dark cave since childhood. They are constricted in such a way that they are only able to see the cave wall that is directly in front of them. They are unable to turn their heads in any other direction and see behind them, or each other. There is a fire burning 
behind the captives, and between the fire and prisoners, a raised walkway. Everything that passes along the walkway, objects and people, cast shadows onto the wall of the cave in front of the prisoners. These shadows are the only forms of reality the prisoners have known. As they have never seen anything else, the shadowy forms on the wall of the cave is the prisoners' reality. The only way in which they could see that the shadows were illusions and not reality itself would be if one of the prisoners broke free from the cave. Plato asks us to imagine that one of the prisoners is freed and made to turn around, to leave the cave and face the fire and the real objects casting the shadows. At first, the prisoner would be dazzled by the light after so long in the darkness, but gradually he would see the true forms of the objects themselves and realise that the shadowy forms on the cave wall were not the full picture, but merely imitations of reality. If the prisoner were to return to the cave and tell the others what he's discovered, how would they react to his enlightenment? Perhaps the prisoner would be ridiculed and laughed at, disbelieved. To the others, the idea of anything other than the shadows on the wall would be both disturbing and unbelievable. Maybe there are some who might want to break free and experience this for themselves. If you were in the cave, listening to the enlightened prisoner, how would you react? Would you be content to stay in the cave, watching the shadows, safe, but bound and ignorant? Or would you rather be free, but exposed to the elements around you? and aware of the imprisonment. If you were the freed prisoner, would you be content to stay in the cave again, knowing that you would be wasting your life watching illusions of reality, rather than experiencing what the rest of the world beyond the walls of the cave has to offer? Part 3. The stage is set. We're all capable of journeying out of our caves. Some of us might be content to stay inside and look at the pictures on the walls. Others, and that means you, because if you're listening to this, then you are a sole adventurer. You know that there is a bigger picture and that there are all sorts of deep truths and insights waiting to be discovered. Soul adventurers are not content to merely stay in the audience. Just as a freed prisoner sees sunlight and experiences reality outside of the cave, tapping into the wisdom of our soul can lead us to enlightenment and allow us to shine our own lights brighter. We can tap into what our souls want to tell us and connect to the bigger picture. By stepping out of our caves, we can go deeper within ourselves and ultimately uncover our soul's purpose. Wayne Dyer said that the highest form of ignorance is when you reject something you don't know anything about. Let's step out of the shadows and embrace the light of our souls, unlocking the depths of our true purpose and potential. Together, let's venture beyond the cave walls where enlightenment and fulfilment awaits. My intention over the course of these episodes is to get you back on track so that you can enjoy the rest of your journey here on Earth. In the next episode, I'll be talking more about the magic of words. Until then, happy travelling. If you enjoyed this episode, you're very welcome to subscribe to my podcast. If you know somebody else who might be interested in it, feel free to share it with them. If you would like to join me on a journey of self-discovery and liberation and discover your true soul's purpose, the soul treasure map that makes you you, 
go to my website and follow the link to my soul treasure map. This will show you how you can uncover your soul's true purpose so that the rest of your journey is an enlightened one. To find out more, visit my website at www.iamjennywilson.com. Here you can find details of how you can download my free PDF ebook, The Hidden Language of Colour. Go to iamjennywilson.com and follow the free ebook link. You can check out my YouTube channel at Jenny Wilson Soul Language, or you can follow me on Instagram at I am Jenny Wilson. Let's reconnect next time and explore more of the universal language of the soul. In the meantime, keep expanding and enjoy the journey. <laughs>